Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Sallallahu wa Sallam, Ala Nimid, Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabihi Ajma'een. Emma Ba'at, we are continuing our study of the work that is entitled Al-Duruz Al-Muhimma Ni'amat Al-Ummah, Important Lessons for Every Muslim, as this work has been authored by the esteemed scholar Abdul Aziz Ibn Abdullah Ibn Baz. May Allah the exalted bestow expanse and mercy upon his soul as he in the year 1420 after the Hijrah, which coincides with the year 1999. We come to Adar we, we come to the seventh lesson that discusses Arkan Salah, that discusses the pillars of the prayer, as um, we have uh, been discussing this for some time now, and uh, hope to conclude at least this lesson today, inshallah, and begin moving on to the next. And we've been going through the uh, the, the entire of the prayer from beginning to end, looking at the prayer from a mechanical standpoint and looking at the impact that different actions have on the prayer and looking at the gravity that different actions have within our prayer. The pillars of the prayer, there are 14 of them, standing with the ability to stand, takbir al ihram the opening takbir, recitation of al-fatiha, of rukur, the bowing position, al-i'tidal, ba'd al-rukur, raising oneself after rukur, prostration upon seven limbs or seven bones, if you like, al-raf'u minhu, raising oneself after prostration, the sitting between the two prostrations, tamatnina, what is called tamatnina or tranquility in all actions of prayer, and uh, a taratib, being al arkan, having sequential order within all pillars of the prayer. And to here we have uh, discussed all of these. And uh, the final pillars, the tashahud al akhir, the final tashahud, wal julus lahu, seeing for that tashahud, wal salatu al nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bestowing salah upon the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wal taslim atan and the uh, the two test themes. Um, one point to mention before we uh, enter into the final tashahud, uh, just a note to mention that the very first pillar of, of the prayer that we discussed is which one? The first pillar of the prayer that we discussed. Al-Qiyam al qudra standing whilst having the ability to stand. Uh, it is the act of standing itself with the ability to stand that is the pillar of the prayer. The description of how to stand, these acts are from the from the sunan of the prayer. These acts are from the sunan of the prayer, the description of how to stand. You follow that? Um, and, uh, there's a, there's a, a description. Um, on the issue of the raising of the hands. Right? There's a discussion concerning that. Um, but when we state standing with the ability to stand, um, what is the description of PM? What is the description of how to stand inside of the prayer? Okay. Verbalize that. You, you're doing it, but verbalize it. On your chest. But that's right, your stomach, though. Your right hand over your left. Okay, good. Right hand over your left. You say right hand over the left on the chest. But you do that, and you put it on your stomach. Yeah. So? On your chest, yeah. But you put it on your stomach. Stomach, yeah. Now you're trying to put it high, so that's <laughs> Okay, so what does it mean? What's the description of it? So you're saying right over the left on the chest. We agree with that? That's the description of the position of PM. That's the prophetic description of PM, of the standing position, right? Over the left on the chest. We agree? Okay, good. Our sisters, we agree, we disagree? Yes? Okay. Now, the, the reason why um, we're saying the word chest is because of the wordage of the hadith, the 
prophetic tradition that, that states the word that states the word sadar. Uh, the word sadar, if we translate that word into English, the word that we come up with is what? What is the word sadar? Huh? Go ahead. Chest. Chest. Okay, good. Now, because uh, the word sadar is translated as chest in uh, we'll call uh, uh, MSA, Modern Standard Arabic, we then take that understanding and then apply it to this prophetic tradition. Okay. Uh, the, the word sadar prophetic tradition is not necessarily limited to what we call the chest, although it does include it. The word sadar it means to be in the front of. It means the front part of the body, right? And the front part of the body is the torso. It's the torso, okay? So it does include the chest, but it's not limited to the to the chest per se. That's why I was attempting to extend an oddly branch to you when you were saying, I said, you're saying chest, but you're placing it on your stomach, right? Right, because it, it actually means the torso. It means the torso. And uh, I recall tell you a story um, because um, like many of you um, when I was a teenager I first learned some of the particulars of prayer you know you learn how to pray and then you start learning the particulars of prayer um, my first experience with some of the particulars of prayer was from the book of uh, Imam al-Albani rahimahullah Sifatul Salat al uh, the prophet's prayer described right that was my experience with it and um, the, the translator, um, uh, a brother from Britain, um, may, may, may Allah preserve him, uh, he chose to translate as chess there, right? And uh, you go to certain source material and things like that. You go to Bukhari, you go to Muslim, right? And, uh, of course, we're looking at the translations of Muhsin Khan, uh, the doctor Muhsin Khan, rahimahullah, he's passed away now. Um, in Taqibdin and Hilali, Rahimahullah, he's passed away for some time now. And, um, you know, they're the same translators that uh, translated the uh, the Noble Qur'an, right, or interpreted the meanings of right, the Noble Qur'an. And uh, you, you come up with the same word again, so you think it's just chest, chest, okay, it's chest. All right. So my first indicator that this wasn't necessarily the case, that it means specifically and only the chest, um, was my first year in um, in Medina, and my first year in Medina, we uh, had the opportunity to sit with Sheikh Ali Nasser al Fakihi, may Allah preserve him. Sheikh uh, Ali ibn Nasser al Fakihi, may Allah preserve the Sheikh. He's one of the teachers in the Prophet Jid, and um, uh, he has a long history in Medina and the scholarship. Those who know know, but in, in any regard, and if we have opportunity, maybe we can talk more about who he is and his life and his stature and. Uh, the impact he's had uh, upon us and things of that nature. But in any regard, when I first get to Medina, uh, you know, you pray. The, the the cheers are throughout the prophet's message, right? And um, it's just these large cheers sitting there, and this is where different scholars teach at, right? But the message is so big, um, you know, just imagine, like, where you're, where you're at with the pillar right there, then it's a big cheer sitting right there, right? You go back a couple more pillars, just a cheer just sitting right there, right? And this is where they teach you. So when it's time to pray, you know, you get up and you pray where you are, where you are. And often there's so many people in the Prophet's Masjid that, uh, you know, maybe you come up some, but you're not going to be that far away from the chair where you're still sitting and learning from the Sheikh. So because of that, um, we will pray near each other. Uh, we will often pray near each other, uh, especially the sunan of the, of the prayer and things like that. And, um, you know, I'm praying, okay right over the left on the chest. We, we upon the sunnah, right? So I'm, I used to pray like this, right? I used to pray. We see brothers doing this, right? Hi, right? Okay. I'm, I'm the only one, right? We, we've seen this before, right? Okay. And, and we think that, you know, we're adhering to the sunnah because that's what it says, right? But really what we see is the translator's choice of the word that he was using, right? On the English side of things, right? Not necessarily what's there and what's actually being indicated and what's meant by the term, right? So I would notice 
things like that, and the sheikh's there, and I would notice that, uh, you know, you could just tell, looking at me, right? Uh, because uh, interestingly enough, um, my first year in Medina, uh, in the Prophet's Masjid, he would teach between Maghrib and Isha. My first year, he had five, stu five students. You no, know, people come, people come to the lesson, but right? There were, there were five students who were there. And other people would just be there to pass by, hear good, or they happen to pray in that spot, and you just sit and listen to what the Sheikh has to say, right? So it was people there, but five to the left. Um, and uh, yeah, for sake of benefit, for sake of benefit, uh, it was myself. Um, my first year in Medina, uh, Kasha Khan, um, cause we used to live together. We were roommates at that time. He was there a year before me. Um, uh, our, our brother Idris, Idris Abdullah, who we also lived together. He started a year before me, me in Medina. And there was an Indonesian brother and there was a Bosnian brother who I forgot both of their names at this late date. But the Bosnian, Bosnian brother, he graduated from, uh, Kuliu Tudawa, Usula I forget what college the Indonesian brother was at. Five of us. So five students. The sheikh is going to know who you are, right? Okay. So he used to watch when I was um, praying and things like that. And I, you know, okay. Right? But I didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. He watched me for months. Months, right? And uh, the sheikh is teaching twice a week, sometimes three times a week, right? During hot time, hot seas, when all the hijaz come, he'll teach seven days a week. He'll change the nature of, of, the, of the study. He would do kitab to he during hot time. Right, because he he wanted to handle a lot of Akita issues because that was his opportunity to reach the world because everybody's here from Farhad from all around the world. So he was shifting Kitab to heat, right? In any regard, he waited for months. And after the lesson, he would do uh fatawa, questions and answers, right? And um this one occasion, he waited for the opportunity for the question to come up. So a question came up about the prayer and about where the hand should be in the position of qiyam in the prayer, right? So it's wisdom and, it, and, it, and it's patience and, right, you, you learn, right? So when you're learning from your teachers, often you may learn more from their disposition and their manners and how they handle things and their wisdom more than you do from the actual content and academics, even though you're getting a lot of that, right, as well. So he waited, question came up, and then um, he answers the question. That the person that the post the person uh, posed the written questions, and then he says, and there are some of the students of knowledge who they have a lot of zeal for the sunnah, and in their zeal for the sunnah, you know, they hear the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ places right over his left on his sada, and they place their hands high up on their chest to the point that it's almost on their neck. And that's not the sunnah, like this. That's not the sunnah, right? But rather, the sunnah is to place the hands, the right over the left, wherever they might naturally fall for you in the area of your torso, right? So then that was the eye-opener for me that, okay, one, what I thought was sunnah wasn't necessarily sunnah, and I need to look into this type of issue a little bit more completely, and what else is out there that I thought I understood that I did, right? Because sometimes we're in our in our zeal, and because something is presented to us a certain way, we believe that's the sunnah, or we believe that is what's most correct. That's half of the challenge. The other challenge is others who we see doing something different, then we will automatically think they're wrong. <laughs> when often the fault is in our own understanding, in our own inaccuracy, in our own incompleteness in our quest for knowledge, right? So it places you in a state of humility, right? And you're open to receive the truth from wherever the truth reaches you from, right? But uh, we say all that to say um, that this is the meaning of where you place your hands, right? Uh, on the torso, wherever it naturally falls for you on your torso. Doesn't necessarily mean, right, on the chest, or on the top of the chest or near your neck. Right. You know, some of the people, some I see some brothers, they do something like like this even. Right. We, we've seen all these things. Right. That was the range because that's range of the chest. Right. The torso. The torso. Right. That's a different thing. Go ahead. Put your hands below the sin or something like 
Am I pronouncing it right? You're saying sudden? Uh, you say are you, you mean to say sudden? Uh, well, explain what you mean. Well, I was reading in the, in the same book that you mentioned. Mm. The prophet. Um, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Forbid placing your hands below the ceiling. Mm -hmm. right. Surah? Is that it? I, I can't tell you what you read. I wasn't there when you read it. <laughs> so, so, okay, so, um, well, I'll just go off of the terms of the prayer that seems similar to what you're saying. There's issue of sadan and there's issue of the surah. Um, and, um, you know, these are particulars. We don't have to, we don't want to go above the level of this class, right? We don't want to go above the level of this class. But surah means the, the navel. Surah means the navel, okay? So um, there is a hadith that does state that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would, would pray with his hand uh, at his navel, right? at his navel, okay? There's a hadith that states that. Now, scholarship holds a discussion on the historicity of that hadith, though, whether it's in a form, that whether we, can, uh, whether we can accept it or not, whether we can act upon it or not. That's a discussion on scholarship, right? Um, you know, interestingly though, interestingly though, uh, that is actually the um, official position of the Hamdi Medhab, though, right? Um, at the navel. Now, once you get there, it becomes now okay. What does at the navel mean? Does at the navel mean that's the boundary and you don't go below it, or does at the navel mean at the navel itself immediately or around the navel? Then if you go somewhere under it, it's not a problem, right? That's that's a sub discussion. Right. Um, but that's where that's coming from. It's based off of, of a hadith. It's just a matter of um, whether the hadith is actionable or not. Even though the majority of scholarship uh, would declare the hadith to be da'if, there are some uh, da'if or fragile hadith that are still workable. Right. Are that are still actionable. Right. Um, if you're talking about the issue of sadal, then sadal, um, this has to do with placing the arms down along the side. Right. Uh, in the natural position that they would they would hang right when you're just standing up right normally and naturally, and um, you know that's an issue that that, that comes up in two areas. Um, it, southern and, and, and sira. Surah. 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 Mm. So surah and southern, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, surah is the navel. Sada is for the hands to uh, be down at the side. Uh, the hands being down at the side. This comes up as a discussion in the position of qiyam. And of course, we see uh, a lot of the Malikis right, that may practice this. We might see some Shiite at times practice that. Um, that's a discussion. Um, but um, for, for, for us, because we're looking to adhere to the prophetic traditions, the way that um, we have uh, been exposed to them, the way that we understand them, we're going to place our right over our left, right, on our torso. Right? That's what we're going to do, right? Um, Navel. Torso being above above the navel to be safe from the chest to above the navel anywhere in that range that's natural for you and your arms, right? Uh, like for example, Abdul Razak for him it was kind of at the top of his stomach. That's naturally where it fell for him. Still, the torso is fine, right? It's no problem with that. Um, and this also comes up when um, you come up from rukur, right? When you raise up from rukur, do you place your hands on your chest or back down at your sides again, right? That's where you're going to find that this, this issue come up, right? Just to answer your question, but. Moving up, moving forward. What tashahud al akhir, the final tashahud, the final tashahud. We state the final tashahud because there is a first tashahud and then there's a final tashahud. Every prayer that has three or four units will have two tashahuds. Yes, no? Two tashahuds. Every prayer that has three or four units. Any prayer that has two or one in their units will have one tashahud. Will have one tashahud. So right. you don't you don't have to say the Ibrahim. This is what I'm understanding. You say the you say salawat to the Prophet of Islam, but not the Ibrahim and the, the second. Okay, excellent, excellent, An excellent point, and that's one point that we're gonna we're gonna get to. The salah al Ibrahimiyah, the Abrahamic prayer is a different part of the prayer than tashahud. Most of us consider it to be one and the same, right? And we consider it to be all this one, one thing. It's actually not. Tashahud is one thing, and the Abraham prayer is another thing, even though one comes after the other, 
right? Even though one comes after the other, right? Okay. Now, the uh, the teshahud it is the it is the final teshahud that is the pillar of the prayer, not the first teshahud. The first teshahud is considered from the wajibat, from the requirements uh, of the prayer that we're going to get to in our next lesson, inshallah. Um, now, the teshahud is called the teshahud because we state our shahada within it. Right? That's why it's called tashahud, tashahud from shahada. Right? You say the shahada in it at the end of the tashahud. Okay, what is the tashahud? How do you say it? He changed position on that one. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh-huh. We'll tell you about it. Huh? I say, Okay. At tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alayna assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihina. Ashadu in la ilaha illa Ashadu enna muhammadan abduhu. That's the tashahud. Okay? That's where it stops. That part, that is the tashahud. So your first tashahud, your second tashahud, that's what you're saying. And there are some variances um, in, in the wordage here. You can say, and we're going to walk through the meaning of it briefly. Uh, you can say assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi salam be upon you o prophet or you can say assalamu ala nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh or you can say salam upon the prophet okay you can say salam upon you o prophet or you can say assalam upon the prophet why is that well, during the life of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the campaigns would say, Salam upon you, O Prophet. But then after the passing of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the majority of the companions then shifted and they began saying, Salam upon the Prophet. They wouldn't say upon you, O Prophet, because he's passed away now. Right? So it's not like they're talking to him directly. They made a distinction. Salam upon the Prophet. Right? Um, except for Umar. Right, may Allah be pleased with him. Right, he continued to say, "Assalamu alaikum, assalam upon you, O Prophet." And uh, you know, when they questioned him about that, he said, "This is the way the Messenger of Allah sorry, said him, taught us, and this is what I'm going to continue to say." <laughs> it is. So, um, in any regard, whether you said this way or that way, you, you have that choice there. At tahiyatu lillah, what does that mean? Y'all say Tashahud, right? Y'all say it, right? Every slap. <laughs> ah. There it is. Tashahud. There it is. Tashahud. Ta. Sha. Hood. Tashahud. Good. Better. Right? Let's walk through it. Et tahiyatu lillah. Um, tahiyat is the plural of the word tahiyah. Tahiyah, where have we heard that word before? Tahiyah. Uh, like, uh, not tayyib, right? You got, you got some of our brothers, they say uh, tahib, right? right? How you doing, brother? I'm tahib. Right? That's what you say, right? Huh? Tahib. Uh-huh, tahib. Right? Tahib. All right, some people, they'll, they'll go even further. They go from tahib to tawheed. How you doing, brother? I'm Tawheed. Right? <laughs> you, you the whole thing? You? Okay. So, um, but yeah, so here, Tahiya. The term Tahiya, we, we commonly come across it when we um, speak to or when we enact what's called Tahiya Tul Masjid. Tahiya Tul Masjid. Right? 
Um, I'm trying to remember the way that uh, that it used to be said now, right? How you guys say it? What do you guys say? Y'all might still say it that way. There's Tahiyatu Masjid. That's what Tahiyatu Masjid. That's what people say, right? Tahiyatu Masjid, right? Tahiyatu Masjid, right? Tahiyatu Masjid. The word Tahiyah, we also hear it when we say Tahiyatu Islam, the Tahiyah of Islam. The word Tahiyah means to greet. Like we say, the greeting of Islam, right? Tahiyatu Islam. The greeting of Islam is Assalamu alaikum. Tahiyatul Masjid, the greeting of the Masjid is what? How you greet the Masjid when you come in? Right. You pray two units of prayer before you sit. Right. Two units of prayer before you sit. That's Tahiyatul Masjid. And it doesn't have to be any particular prayer. It's just praying two units of prayer before you sit down. Whatever those two units that you prayed, whether it's an obligatory or voluntary prayer, or you're just praying two units before you sit, no problem. So that, though, now that we know what that is and what this word is, right? Could we state at tahiyatu lillah? The tahiyat belong to Allah. Um, greeting here doesn't quite serve us in the meaning of tahiyat, even though we can translate it as greeting. It means ta'dhimat. It means magnification and extolling that this all belongs to Allah. Anything that has to do with magnifying, anything that has to do with bestowing, uh, uh, extolling, this belongs to Allah and Allah is deserving of it. That's what that means. At-tahiyyatu lillah. Was-salawatu. And the salawat belong to Allah and he's deserving of it. A salawat here carries two meanings. Uh, of course, salawat is the plural of the word. Not a trick question. We know it. Salawat is the plural of the word salah. Right, salah is the singular. Salawat is the plural. So salawat belong to Allah and he is deserving of it or them as well. Salawat here bears two meanings. One is the five obligatory prayers. The five obligatory prayers, they are for Allah, and he is deserving of those five obligatory prayers. The other understanding of salawat is um, thana, praise. That praise belongs to Allah, and he is deserving of it. Meaning what? Meaning, like when we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. O oh Allah, bestow salah upon Muhammad. Now listen to that. Listen to that. O oh Allah, bestow salah upon Muhammad. Like, what does that mean? Does this mean that Allah is praying to Muhammad? But when we translate the word salah, the most common translation for salah is what? Prayer. It's prayer. So then what does this mean? O oh Allah, bestow salah upon Muhammad. Uh uh, this is Allah. We're asking Allah to bestow salah upon Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Oh Allah, bestow salah upon Muhammad. That's what we're saying. So, what does it mean? So, you're saying that it does not mean that Allah is praying to Muhammad, and you're right. So, then what meaning is there for salah that doesn't mean prayer? Anyone? Go ahead. So the lion said, "It's going to be an intercessor, uh, inshallah. That he be an intercessor so his prayers be heard. He's an intercessor so that his prayers will be heard." The rest of us say. So you just gave him a hint when you said "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? That's what we say all the time. Sallallahu. When you say "Sallallahu," this means Allah is the one doing the salah. Allah, Allah is doing this. So it's not Ahmed is Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Okay, good. So when Allah, well, we'll do this in reverse. When a human being bestows Salah upon another human being, right? And the Prophet said would do this on occasion, right? Um, 
This now means dua. This is dua, right? Uh, Sallallahu ala Sayyidin, Sallallahu ala Sajjad, for example. Right, dua. We make a dua for each other. When the angels bestow salah, they are seeking forgiveness for us. When the angels bestow salah. When Allah bestows salah, Allah is praising the creation amongst the high-ranking angels that are with him. Okay? So now, this is why we state the other meaning of salawat, a salawat to lillah, a tahiyyat to lillahi was salawat. Right? Salawat can mean the five obligatory prayers. It can also mean praise. Allah and his praise of the creation. So Allah's praise of the creation, whenever he wills to do so, to whatever extent he wills to do so, that belongs to him. And he's deserving of that right to praise the, cre the creation. So when we say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we're saying, may Allah bestow salah, Right, upon the Prophet, وسلم, we're asking Allah to praise the Prophet amongst the high ranking angels that are with him. In the Abrahamic prayer, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, O Allah, bestow salah upon Muhammad, O Allah, praise Muhammad amongst the high ranking angels that are with you. That's the meaning. So, at tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu, the next part. What? What tayyibatu? What tayyibat to? Tayyibat is the plural of the word tayyib. And tayyib means what? Good, excellent, splendid. Okay, good. Inna Allah ta'ala tayyibun la yakbalu illa tayyib. Certainly Allah the Exalted is tayyib. And he only accepts that which is tayyib. Okay. So what do we think this means here when we state that certainly Allah is tayyib and he only accepts that which is tayyib? What do we think it means here in this context? Because this context is the same meaning in the tashahid. Offering. offering. Certainly Allah is offering and he only accepts what is offering. Certainly Allah is offered and he only accepts what is offered. That's what I'm saying? Okay, I don't know. Okay, that's this side. Going over this side of the room. What do we think? You getting too deep into the weeds? Huh? All right. So the meaning is tall here. The meaning is tall here, right? Um, certainly Allah is pure. And he only accepts that which is pure, right? And in this particular hadith, the indicator is actually the name of Allah, Al-Qudus. Al-Qudus, of the one that is sanctified, or if you like, the one that is holy, right? Certainly Allah is holy, which means he's pure. And he only accepts that which is pure, right? Pure of our intentions, pure of our actions, right? Thus and so. So we're stating that the tayyibat, belong to Allah and he's deserving of it, meaning all things that are pure belong to Allah and he is deserving of those things that are pure. So far, so good. At tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. Next part. As-salamu alayka. Ayyuhan Nabiyyu, Salam be upon you, O Prophet. What does Salam mean? Peace. 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 Like it's 1992, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like to remove um, all imperfections or like um, mm -hmm. like uh, it can be meaning like uh, Allah knows best, like illnesses, okay, like imperfections, mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's the first part. When we're conveying the salam to one another and you say assalamu alaikum, that's dua. We're making dua for each other. 
That's what that is, right? So to heal to the slam, the greeting of the slam, it's a greeting, but it doesn't mean like hi, bye. It doesn't mean like what's up, right? It doesn't mean like, well, what's good, right? Now, what's good is old now. You got Now you got to say what's tea. You know, that's a little feminine to me, right? So, so, so it's huh. like you asking Allah to remove, like what is... An-naqs wal-aib. No. So you're making dua to Allah that he removes fault and deficiency from the person that you're supplicating for. That's what salam means, right? And we know that we say, peace be unto you, peace be upon you, because that's how it was first introduced like almost 100 years ago now, and we just kind of just stuck with it, right? And it's fine. It includes that meaning, but it's not limited to that meaning. There's a little bit more going on, right? So from one perspective, we are asking Allah to remove fault and deficiency from you, right? Meaning that if you mean this, if you really mean, because we're supposed to, when you make dua, you're supposed to be sincere in your dua, right? So when you say to your brother or your sister, assalamu alaikum, you're supposed to mean that. So you're supposed to not want fault and deficiency to be present inside of your brother or your sister. Like you're supposed to really want that inside of yourself, in your heart. So much so that you're asking Allah to remove anything that might be with that person of fault and deficiency. That's the meaning of the salamu alaikum. That's what's going on spiritually. Okay. Um, also, from the meanings of a salam, when we say when we state as salamu alaikum, or in this case, as salamu alayka, salam upon you, right? Is a salama. Salama, salama is like um, preservation. Salama is like health. Salama is like security. Salama is like protection. So we're asking Allah to grant you that too. We want you to be safe. We want you to be protected and all the things that we just stated, right? What is one of Allah's names? As-Salam. As As-Salam is one of Allah's names. Wa-lillahi al biha. And to Allah belongs beautiful names, so call upon him by them. So another understanding here is not just that we're making dua. We want this for you so much. Fault and deficiency move from you, preservation and health and safety and security and all these things. We want this for you so much that we call upon Allah by his name, As-Salam, to assure that he responds to the dua. That's what's going on there, right? Because one of the means of Allah responding to your dua is calling upon Allah by the names and qualities that are relative to whatever you're asking for at that time. So then you mention those names and those qualities of Allah, and then you ask for what you want, right? So this, these are the meanings of assalamu alaikum. And if we understand it this way, you're not thinking high, you're not thinking bye, you're not thinking what's up, you're not thinking what's good, you're not thinking what's tea, right? You're not thinking any of that. You're in, you're in the spiritual space now. You're in the space of dua. You're in the space of, right? None of you will have faith until you love for your brother that what you love for yourself, or love for your sister what you love for yourself. Just in the greeting, you're in this space. And to want these things for your brother and your sister, uh, for your child, for your aunt, for your uncle, for your spouse, these things are so important that within our legislation, Whenever you come upon the Muslim, make this dua for them. Before you depart for the Muslim, make this dua for them. It's binding. Right? That's how important it is for us to want this for each other. That our laws made it binding upon us to say this every time. Every time I come up to you, every time I cross your path, right? Say it again. You left, you came back out. Say it again. Called you. Called you back. Say it again. I emailed you. Say it again. We already together. There's a poll. <laughs> Shay, 
Huh. So why did, how did she tell her he's a huge people? I'm trying to say that's that's a bad thing if you let the cold split you. SubhanAllah. That's what Iblis does. He'll take the good and make it bad. Take the bad and make it good. Right? So Allah Musta'a. You're supposed to say, Give salam to the person that you're with. Right? Because you, you've been a partner. You come back together. Now you have opportunity to make this du'a for each other again. <laughs> right? That's what's going on. Right? And if we want this for each other, how much more do we want it for the Prophet? Right? So all this that we just stated, As-salamu alayka, ayyuhin nabi. Salam for you, O Prophet. You're making dua for the Prophet. Right? Okay. Wa rahmatullahi and the mercy of Allah. Meaning, may you be forgiven. This is what the mercy of Allah here means. May you be forgiven of your previous sins and may you be granted success to not fall into sin in the future. So when you state that, assalamu alaikum, and then you say wa rahmatullah, that's what that means. You want the person to be forgiven of their sins. And you don't want the person to sin in the future. And you're supposed to mean that in your heart when you say it. Well, better cat to who? And his better cat. And the better cat of Allah. In this case, for the Prophet. But we understand it as well when we are giving the salam to one another. Better cat is the plural of the word. Okay, we we we, we fasting and all that. Okay, I, I understand. Better uh, cat is the plural of the word beraka. Good. What does beraka mean? We translate it as blessing. What's beraka mean? Uh, reward. Uh, reward. Ziyada. Ziyada to khayr. Okay. Rest of us say. Reward. Okay. The origin of the word barakah means for something to grow, to get be more and bigger. It also means for something to increase. So when something is blessed, whatever it is now, it's going to become more of that thing. Right? This is why the Messenger of Allah is stating that sadaqah, charity, doesn't decrease your wealth. Because sadaqah, sadaqah is barakah, it's a blessing. So by nature of it being a blessing, it can't decrease it, it grows it. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're asking Allah to grow what that person has into more. You're asking Allah to increase what that person already has and make it more. Barakah is al-khayr, al-kafir, al-thabit. It is an abundance of of established excellence. We want you to have excellence in your life and we want you to have excellence and abundance in your life and we don't want it to go anywhere. Once you got it, we want it to stay with you. That's what that means. See? So, everything that we just asked for in this salam of Fault and deficiency being removed and preservation and, and, and health and uh, and protection and safety and forgiveness of your sins uh, of the past. Success to not fall into sin again in the future. May Allah give you all of that. And then may he cause all of that to grow for you, to become more, to be increased. May he grant you all of that and give you more of something else. That's the meaning. As-salamu alayka, ayyuhin nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good. Next part. At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. As-salamu alayka, ayyuhin nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihina. Now, this same salam that we just asked Allah to bestow upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may this same salam be upon us and upon the righteous worshippers of Allah and upon the righteous servants of Allah. This is interesting for several reasons. One, 
we state, may salam be upon us, not upon me. Meaning you're meant to want salam for yourself and everyone else too. The salam doesn't belong to you. You don't own it. You have access to it. You can utilize it, but you don't have a monopoly on it. It doesn't belong to you and only you and nobody else. So this salam, want it for yourself and everyone else. And yourself and everyone else is as though you're one. Because you say, As-salamu alayna, as upon us. We're one now. And this is how you see the Muslims. One. Upon us. All of us. Not upon me and you. Separate, no, all of us together. We're together. That's one. Two. This is teaching us to not ascribe piety to ourselves. We say, salam upon us and upon the righteous servants of Allah. As though the righteous servants of Allah is something different than us. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he had wanted to, and if Allah had revealed him to, that, to him that way, he could have just said, As-salamu alayna. Salam upon us, and that's it. Or salam upon the righteous. Salam upon us, the righteous. But it's not worded that way. Salam upon us and the righteous servants of Allah. So that's humility. We don't go around calling ourselves righteous. We don't go around thinking that we're better than someone else. We don't go around with arrogance. Why? Because the heart that has a mustard seed of arrogance inside of it, what? Will not be allowed interest in the paradise. We've got to remove that. We're not saying that you can't be honorable. We're not saying that you cannot respect yourself. We're not saying that you, you cannot carry yourself with dignity because you can and you should. We're supposed to as Muslims. But arrogance is something different. Arrogance is something different. Arrogance is you have re you reject the truth. You have contempt of the people. You look at others upon upon them with disdain, as though they are uh, beneath you or you're better than them. Right? That's that's the arrogance. Right? Truth comes to you. You know it's the truth. You just reject it. That's arrogance. Right? So this is teaching us here in the tashahud. Salam upon us and the righteous servants of Allah. The righteous servants of Allah. From the human beings, from the jinn, from the angels, and from anything else that may be in Allah's creation. We want salam for all of them too. So we know the angels are righteous. And we know they are amongst the jinn, those that are righteous. The term jinn and devil are not synonyms. They're not synonyms. Uh, Allah Tabarakul Ta'ala, He says concerning the jinn and on the tongue of the jinn, wa inna minna salihuna wa minna duna dharik kunna tara ikhaqira da. And from us, meaning from the jinn, this is in Surah Al Jinn, and from us are those who are righteous, and from us are those that are other than that, certainly we are varying types and denominations. So they are from the jinn, those who are righteous. They are from the jinn, those who are Muslim. All of the jinn are not kufar. All of the jinn are not shayateen. They're not, all of the jinn are not devils. So again, jinn and devil are not synonyms. Jinn and shaitan are not synonyms. So we want salam for us and for all the righteous servants of Allah, whoever they may be, human being, jinn, angel, other than that, we want the salam for all of them. Fault and deficiency move from them. Safety and health for them. Uh, uh, in, in all the things that we mentioned. Good. Next part. At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. As-salamu alayka ayyuhin nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihina. I'm on my own today, huh? Ashhadu in la ilaha illallah. I testify that la ilaha illallah. I testify, meaning I have knowledge of and certainty in what I'm testifying to. I'm not ignorant of la ilaha illallah. I don't have doubt in la ilaha illallah. I have knowledge of la ilaha illallah. I have certainty in la ilaha illallah. What does la ilaha illallah mean? La ma'buda bi haqqin illallah. There is nothing worthy of worship in truth except for Allah. If you like, 
لا معبود بحق في الوجود إلا الله. There was none worthy of worship in truth in existence except for Allah. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. And I testify this أشهد. This is where we're getting the name of this act in the salah. أشهد تشاهد شهادة. All the same same root there, right? And I testify that Muhammad is a servant and his messenger. I have knowledge of Muhammad and that he's a servant and his messenger. I have certainty in Muhammad that he is a servant and his messenger. I'm not ignorant of that and I don't have any doubts in that. This is what we're saying when we testify like this. This is the tashahid, right? Yes? What it also means is you say that you follow Muhammad without question. Yes. Yes. It also bears the meaning of, of mutaba'a, of emulating the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Allah, taking him as an example in our lives, in all areas of, of life, right? In aqidah, but not just in aqidah. In aqidah and ibadah. It's not aqidah without ibadah. It's not ibadah without akhlaq. So we emulate him in theology, in the spirituality. And not that by itself. Also in his worship, which we strive to worship how he worshiped. And not that by itself. And in his character. So it's not aqidah, it's not, it's not theology and worship without character. Character too is all of it. Right? Okay. So you're saying you have knowledge of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Well, who is he? What's his name? Right. What's his last name? Right. Who are his parents? What do you know about his life? When did he live? Where did he live? Was the environment like we live? You have knowledge of Muhammad. This is what you're testifying to. You're saying you know him. So how do you how are you saying every prayer that I testify that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah? You're testifying that you know him and that you follow him and emulate him in your life. But you don't know you don't know anything about his life. You saying you love him? How you love someone that you don't know anything about? If you love someone or something, you know about it. You love a sport. You know about them players. You know their stats. Right? You know about the discussions and who's getting traded, who might get traded, or whisper of getting traded. Muhammad said. See? Okay. So we testify that Muhammad is a servant of Allah and his messenger. We say that he is the servant of Allah, meaning that he is one that worships Allah. He is a worshiper of Allah as we are worshipers of Allah as we come closer to a close for today. The meaning here is that we don't raise him above the status that Allah gave him to the point that we begin worshiping him. Because he is a servant of Allah as you are servants of Allah. He is a worshiper of Allah as you are a worshiper of Allah. Yet he is also the messenger of Allah. So we also don't lower him beneath the status that Allah gave him. Yes, he is a worshiper. We're worshipers. But his status in being a worshiper is higher than ours. A messenger of Allah is the highest level of being a human being. The highest level of being a human being is prophethood. And messengership is the highest level of prophethood. See, it's levels to this. You see? Amongst humanity, highest level. Prophethood, he's a prophet. He's got that. But even amongst the prophets, he's the highest level amongst them, the messengers. That's the highest level of prophethood. I mean, yes, yeah, highest level of prophethood is messengership. And amongst the messengers, he's the highest level amongst the messengers. So don't lower him below that status. The understanding is Allah already gave him so much right, so much stature, so much position, so much praise that it's not possible to give him more than Allah gave him without giving him the rights of Allah because Allah already gave him everything already. That's the understanding when we state that he is a servant and his messenger. So we don't raise him above his status and lower him beneath the status either. This is why both are stated, his servant and his messenger. That's the meaning of the tashahid when we state it. Was salatu ala nabi 
Uh, of course, we sit for the Tashahud. We just we demonstrated how to sit already. We don't need to demonstrate that again. Well, salatu ala nabi and salah upon the Prophet. Uh, we mentioned that salah upon the Prophet means what? Raise him in rank. Okay, good. We are asking Allah to praise the Prophet Muhammad amongst the high ranking angels that are with him. Okay. This is what that means. And understand here, a salah upon the Prophet is the pillar. The Abrahamic prayer is the description of how to bestow salah upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so what suffices this pillar, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, that suffices this pillar. But the description of this pillar is the Abrahamic prayer. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun mujid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin uh, oh Allah, bestow salah upon the Prophet Muhammad and upon the family and followers of the Prophet Muhammad. Just as you have bestowed salah upon Ibrahim and the family and the followers of Ibrahim, certainly you are majestic and you are full of praise. O oh Allah, bestow blessing upon Muhammad and upon the family and the followers of Muhammad, just as you have bestowed a uh, 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 blessing upon Ibrahim and upon the family and the followers of Ibrahim, certainly you are majestic and you are full of praise. Okay. Now, uh, we're, we're getting close. We're getting close. And uh, honestly, uh, your eyes told me that I was supposed to stop about 15 minutes ago, right? That's what your eyes were telling me. Um, but we hear what we we're like right at the end, right? <laughs> um, if a person were to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, this fulfills the pillar. But continue to do what you have been doing. State the entire of the Abrahamic prayer and get the added blessing that is that is there. Um Whilst uh, throughout all of the Madahib, you're going to see the Abrahamic prayer that it should be said. It's actually something that is unique to the Hanbali Madhab to state this as a pillar of the prayer, though, as a pillar of the prayer, right? But nevertheless, keep doing what you're doing. Everyone says it in the same exact spot, right? Okay. Um, we should be able to go over this briefly. We should be able to do this. We got a little more gas. You guys done. Sure. You fresh. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're right up on the time for the Iqamah, so we got to move a little, more, a little bit more quickly. O oh Allah, bestow salah upon Muhammad. Meaning, O oh Allah, commend and praise Muhammad amongst the high angels that are with you. Um, and upon the Al of Muhammad. Al. It means, it comes to the word ahl, but the ha is, is taken out, right? And then the two alas are, are combined. Al, right? Uh, that technically means family. But here, and we'll expedite, it means family and the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It means both, okay? His family, meaning his household, right? His wives and his children and his, his, uh, his lineage, right? Praise them as well. And those who followed the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and emulate him, meaning the people of the Sunnah, right? the people of the Sunnah as well. Okay, Just as you have bestowed the Salah upon Ibrahim and the family and followers of Ibrahim. Now, when you say just as, who is the greater messenger? Because they're both messengers, Muhammad or Ibrahim. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's the greater. So when you say just as here, you're not saying the same. You're not saying the same. That's not what's being said here. 
it's actually the meaning of just as is because. Bestow this upon Muhammad because you bestowed it upon Ibrahim. Because Muhammad is the greater messenger. So if Muhammad is the greater messenger, how can it be bestowed upon Ibrahim and not be bestowed upon the Prophet Muhammad? So because you have bestowed this upon Ibrahim, bestow this upon Muhammad Does that make sense? So kama here is not lit tashbih, it is lit ta'lil. It is not for resemblance or for things to be similar. It's for justification. It's because you have. And uh, we're going to finish. Um, and then you state, oh Allah, uh, bless Muhammad. Right? And the meaning of bless, the meaning of bless is what we stated earlier. Uh, barakah is for something to grow, for something to increase, become more. So after you bestow salah upon Muhammad and the family and the followers of Muhammad, bless him as well. Meaning cause what he has to grow and become more. Does that make sense? All of that and an increase. Just as you have done for Ibrahim. Meaning because you did that for Ibrahim, this happened for him. And Muhammad is the greater messenger. So because you did it for Ibrahim, you have to do it for Muhammad Sa'isa. Okay. Innaka Hamidu Majid. Certainly you are, meaning Allah, you are Majid, you are Hamid. Um, Majid, uh, Majid means we translate it as majestic, but it means one that has many qualities. So when we state that Allah is Majid, or we state a person is the servant of Majid, Abdul Majid, he's a servant of the one that has many qualities, as Allah has many qualities. Hamid, right, to uh, to have the quality of being praised or be full of praise means qualities of perfection. So certain in you, Allah, are the one who possesses many perfect qualities. Right, That's the meaning of this in the Tishabit, right? Also a way of securing our dua because this Abraham prayer is a dua. And again, as we stated earlier, to Allah belongs beautiful names, to so call upon him by them. A means of our dua being responded to. So we want Allah to respond to this supplication that we're making for the Prophet Muhammad, for his family and his followers, uh, and, and also Ibrahim and his family and followers as well. So then we call upon Allah by the names and qualities that are relative to what we're asking for, as we are doing here. That is the tashahud. That is what it means. That is the Abrahamic prayer. That is what it means. We've gone through 13 of the pillars of the prayer. We wanted to complete them. We still have one more. The Taslimatan. The two Taslim. The two Taslims. Right? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Next week. Hadullah Alam Salah. We'll take uh, questions after the Salah show. Nobody. Um, nobody.